Hello everyone. Before starting today's episode, I want to say something else. Some friends watched my video and gave me a lot of suggestions, which I think are very useful. For example, some thought that what I was talking about is a bit too theoretical and suggested that I deliver the content in a general and casual way. Some others said that we're now in an era featuring fast food culture and whether each episode could be shorter. I think these suggestions are useful. Today, I'll try speaking in a general and casual way and compressing the content of each episode. Today, we are talking about artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? When a machine replaces the human brain to do some work, it is called artificial intelligence. We used to shop only in stores, but now we can shop online. If you go to a shopping site, the goods on this shopping site can be a lot more than those in the offline mall. There are many billions of goods online. Among the billions of goods, you can enter the variety, specification, price requirement, and color requirement of the product you need, and then with one click, the product page is displayed in less than a second. Sure, if your network is interrupted, the page will not appear. This is another story. Over the years, I've been writing and going to the library to look up information. I spent 28 years writing the book Saving Humanity. When I was a student, I went to the college library to look up information. After graduation, the unit I worked for was next to the Beijing Library, which is now the National Library. I often went to the Beijing Library to look up information, which is really troublesome. But now I resort to search engines such as Google and Baidu. First, I'd like to explain why I mentioned Google. Since this video will be translated into multiple languages and played globally, I quote worldwide information. Actually, it's inconvenient to use Google in China today. That's roughly what I mean. When I search for information on Google and Baidu, as long as I enter a keyword, the result will come out immediately among billions of data, which is very convenient. Sometimes I wonder if there was the internet or if I could access the internet at that time. I wouldn't have to spend 28 years writing a book. It might be done years in advance. Why can query be so convenient? Because there is a program that is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence can help us a lot nowadays, such as translating, broadcasting, and playing chess. It has defeated a chess grandmaster as well as a Go champion. Today, I want to show two artificial intelligence products. See? This is a robot dog, developed by Boston Dynamics in 2016, but it can only run on the flat ground. Let's watch another video. See? This robot is developed by Boston Dynamics, is much smarter than the robot dog. It is very dexterous, can easily cross obstacles, and can also rotate and turn back and forth. It is even more dexterous than an athlete and even more steady when standing. Boston Dynamics announced that this robot will be mass-produced and put on the market soon. It follows that artificial intelligence is deeply engaging with and changing human society. The substitution of science and technology for both the abilities of human and animals is mainly reflected in two aspects. For one thing, functional simulation. For another, limb structure simulation. In terms of functional simulation, there are following examples. First, the aircraft simulates the flight of birds. The aircraft wings don't flap. See? Second, 
the computer simulates the human brain to perform calculations rather than simulating the movement of neurons in the human brain. And the robot dog and robot I just showed are examples of limb structure simulation. It does what the human limbs do. Whether it's functional simulation or limb structure simulation, there is a law of science and technology. As long as the simulation can be achieved, humans and animals will be quickly surpassed and left far behind. Take airplanes replacing birds to fly as an example. Now airplanes can travel several times the speed of sound. The speed of drones can be more than 10 times the speed of sound. But how fast can a bird fly? Planes can take off weighing hundreds of tons. How much can a bird carry? Not to mention the replacement of human brains by computers. Computers are now capable of performing billions of operations per second. How many times can the human brain perform calculations per second? Computers are billions of times faster than humans. Now the quantum computer is ready to come out. It will be many times more powerful than current computers. It can be seen that, regarding the robot I just showed, although it is very dexterous now, it will be considered primitive after 10 or 20 years. If artificial intelligence is used to control drones to chase us, we can hide in caves. If artificial intelligence is used to control cars to chase us, we can only take small roads instead of big roads, as cars can't run on small roads. But the robot concerns the simulation of limb structure, it can go as far as humans can go, and its reflexes and dexterity are many times better than ours. According to reports, both the US and Russia are working on robot warriors, and I believe other major countries are studying these things as well. When the robot warrior comes out, it may be as dexterous as the robot I just mentioned. But we will have it upgraded quickly and integrate all the most advanced things into it to make it clairvoyant and clairaudient. Weapons are getting more and more advanced, starting with guns, cannons, lasers, chemical poisons, flamethrowers, to the unknown later. They react extremely quickly, not several times, dozens of times or hundreds of times faster than human reaction speed, but hundreds of thousands of times, millions of times or tens of millions of times faster. How terrible! If the robot warrior program gets out of control and the robot kills people at sight, wouldn't it cause a chaos? Currently, artificial intelligence actually has reached a very high level. Artificial intelligence is proficient in self-learning. In 2016, Google produced a robot called AlphaGo, which defeated the Korean Go player Lee Seedol. The robot learns by itself. How does it learn by itself? For example, when robot plays Go with you, during the process of playing, it stores and memorizes the correct schemes. When you are not playing, the robot will play with itself, and during this time, it will also store the accumulated correct schemes, just like a Go player memorizing the Go moves. I can play Go as well, but I am too amateur and have never memorized Go moves but I know professional players have to memorize Go manuals, otherwise he can't play and his level can neither be improved. But how many Go moves can humans memorize? I would estimate that a professional Go player would be great if he could memorize thousands of moves. It's just a random estimate, I can't give an accurate number, 
I didn't talk with Go players about how many moves they could memorize. But I do know how many moves the robot can memorize. The number reaches millions, tens of millions or even more. In memorizing Go moves and calculating, the robot keeps learning, thus improving its level constantly. AlphaGo won the game against Lee Sedol, but it actually lost a round. Since then, however, AlphaGo has never lost a round against any of the challengers. When Chinese Go player Ke Jie played against it, he didn't win a round either. Ke Jie seems to rank first in the world Go ranking ahead of Lee Sedol. Then why was he still defeated by AlphaGo? Because AlphaGo had kept learning. But the robot learning is built upon logical thinking. It relies heavily on experience and can only learn slowly, from quantitative changes to qualitative changes. But if a robot has the thinking ability of our brain or is fully equipped with the thinking ability of human brain, it will no longer learn in this way. What problems can current computers and supporting robots solve? They can only process logical aspects such as memorizing, computation, judgment, and reasoning. They can neither conduct association, generalization, and refinement, nor generate inspiration or insight. They can't associate one qualitative change to another. However, current artificial intelligence is developing from only having logical thinking ability to having both logical thinking ability and inspirational thinking ability. If artificial intelligence genuinely possesses the abilities, it might generate such associations. How could a smart robot like me be commanded by stupid humans? The robot might betray humans and disobey human commands. By then, it will be very difficult for us to control it. Therefore, the rapid development of artificial intelligence in recent years has caused concerns of many scientists who fear it would do extreme harm to mankind. As Musk said, we need to stay vigilant about artificial intelligence, which is more dangerous than nuclear warheads. Hawking said, the most profound impact of mankind to date is the rise of artificial intelligence. He said, I have witnessed many profound social changes in my life, among them the most profound one with ever-increasing impact on mankind is the rise of artificial intelligence. He added that sooner or later AI will be self-aware and when it is, it will be difficult to control it. Bill Gates said in an online interview, the development of artificial intelligence in the coming decades can endanger human beings. I don't understand why some people are not concerned. The success of artificial intelligence may be the biggest event in the history of our civilization, but it may also be the last major event in the history of our civilization, as the irrational development of artificial intelligence may radically destroy humanity or wipe out the human race. That's all for this episode. Thank you.